Hey, what's up, y'all? Y'all know my slogan. I don't know it all, but I know what I've been through. Now, before we get into this video, please make sure you head on down to Instagram and follow us on our official Instagram page at Hookah Anonymous underscore. We're able to be a little more explicit, a little more uncensored, and share content freely without running the risk of having our channel terminated. So, once again, Make sure you head on down to Instagram and follow us on our official Instagram page at hookah anonymous underscore. We're almost at 100,000 subscribers. So if you like this video, make sure you subscribe and hit that bell so you're notified every time we drop new content. Now let's get into what you guys came here to see. Now, it's been a lot going on and a lot of he say, she say when it comes to this FBG duck trial involving the old block suspects who are being charged for the death of FBG duck when he was fatally killed back in August of 2020. We've been keeping you guys updated and making sure that we stay on top of every detail that comes out about this case by articles that have came out, whether it's the Chicago Tribune or Chicago Sun-Times, anything that's concerning the trial. Now, it's not being televised or majorly publicized, but Mama Doug mentioned that it's open to the public, so if you would like to come down to the courtroom whenever the dates are set, feel more than free to do so. Now, we learned a lot up until this point where we've heard that it's a lot of people cooperating, a lot of surveillance, a lot of witnesses, and a lot of new evidence that will come forth as the trial proceeds. We start hearing about people we didn't even know that was associated with the case, that's testifying, just the whole nine yards, man. But today we learned that there was a motion filed where they wanted the judge to grant a mistrial within the case. And let me tell y'all right now, from the jump, once I seen the headline say that these guys were pushing for a mistrial, I laughed right away. I don't know what type of lawyers they got, but they did say that a lot of them don't have paid attorneys. They like give it to them, appointed by the courts. But if you understand the court process or ever been in a legal situation with the feds, you know damn well they not going for no mistrial. Maybe the state, if you got enough evidence to back up your mistrial, followed by a very good lawyer, and I should emphasize very good lawyer, but for the feds to grant you a mistrial, is almost borderline impossible, especially if you don't have a reputable attorney in your corner. Now, I'm not saying it's impossible, but with the Fed's conviction rate and the fact that they have tons of evidence, including surveillance, it's going to be very complicated to try to convince them to just throw all that away and proceed with a mistrial. And let's say, hypothetically speaking, that these guys was to get it. Just know that somebody somewhere is getting paid very, very great money because ain't no way in hell now Los money alone with all the evidence that they have against him they're not just going to turn a blind eye to it trust me so we're going to get into why a motion to file a mistrial was even presented for the mistrial and then talk about everything involving it in a second but before we do make sure you like this video and subscribe if you aren't already so you can stay updated on everything going on whenever we drop a new video now let's get into it now as of today november 16th 2023 it said that the attorneys for the six suspects have all agreed to file a motion for a mistrial due to an FBI agent's testimony concerning retaliation upon witnesses. FBI Special Agent Kevin Doyle testified that the feds had only sought the cell phone records of three of the six suspects because they had concerns about the safety and protection of the witnesses that were cooperating with the investigation. He would tell the courtrooms, quote, there had been retaliation against witnesses in the past associated with this group. Now, he never specified who he was referring to exactly, but defense attorneys assumed he was referring to Oblock and their affiliation with the BDs, aka Black Disciples. Christopher Thomas, aka C Things lawyer Keith Spielfogel, would claim that he wasn't informed of the details provided by the FBI agent like the other lawyers were thus arguing that the FBI agent's testimony wouldn't lessen the problem that it already caused that he was not informed about. So in a nutshell, he's stating that the comment made was outrageous towards his client and caused unnecessary drama that can't be cured in the courtroom. I assume that C-Thing's lawyer is trying to say that the agent made false claims without proof that can affect the jury's decision making in the end because they got the wrong perception of the BDs retaliating against witnesses, including his client. Now, when it comes to the lawyers for Robinson, aka Kenny Mack, 
and Turpin, aka THFTZ, they would state that the prosecutors aren't saying that Kenny Mac and THFTZ is a part of O Block. So, pretty much, how or why would they involve them in an O Block Rico, which the government has to prove that they played roles in committing murder and furtherance of racketeering in the first place? So, with that being said, Kenny Mac lawyer is stating that the defendants are being robbed of a fair trial and stated that there was no threat of retaliation upon witnesses neither. But let me say this, even if the judge was to agree to take these guys out of the O Block Rico as the organization is considered, they'll still have to defend themselves for their role that they played in the commission of a crime. So Turpin and Kenny Mack may not be a part of the long investigation that the prosecutors have on O Block from like 2013 and 14 and things like that, but that still don't take away from their roles in the initial death at hand concerning FBG Duck. Turpin is charged with being the individual who dropped Duck's location in the first place, whereas if he would have never done that, then all of this would have never even happened to begin with. And keep in mind that they have evidence that he sent text messages and evidence of him trying to get in touch with D-Thing who reps aside that are ops when it comes to Duck the same day within the same timestamps of Duck being shot and killed, right before that. So even if they separate him from the Rico, he's still gonna have to defend himself when it comes to all of that. You know, so as far as Kenny Mack, the same would go for him as well. Even if they separate him from the Rico part of it, he'll still have to defend himself against the claims and evidence that they have against him as well. So with all that being said, Judge Martha Pacoles rejected the request and simply removed the comments made by the FBI agent and told jurors to never mind the comments as if it never even happened, right? She will also state that she don't see how that one comment can warrant the approval of a mistrial, which goes back to what I stated earlier. They're going to have to come harder than that if they're banking on a mistrial because the courts aren't just going to grant a mistrial in a Fed case involving a high profile death, especially when they got tons of evidence, including surveillance. Now, if this is the type of moves these guys are making in court, I can tell you right now that it's not looking too good for them. Their lawyers or representation clearly don't know what they're into. You know, clearly it seems like their lawyers are just acting out of pure desperateality and looking for anything. However, a mistrial would just be a waste of time if that's what you're looking for. And FBI agents' comments don't take away from the surveillance that they have. And FBI agents' comments don't take away from the witnesses and cooperators that they have. And FBI agents' comments don't take away from the DNA evidence that they have. And FBI, matter of fact, y'all know where I'm going with this, man. At the end of the day, they have to do better than that. Keep in mind that whenever you go to trial, it costs the courts, it costs the, the, the government, it costs the money. So they're not just going to throw that away all for uh, FBI agents' comments. They're going to have to come a little more better than that, man. But um, I do remember that they say that Muop was the only one that had a paid lawyer. I'm not sure if something changed since then, but it clearly shows that he really might be the only one with a paid lawyer. You know, because this is just crazy. But anyway, y'all jump in the comments. Let me know what y'all think about this, man. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Hit that bell so you're notified every time we drop new content. And remember, as long as you keep on watching, I'm going to keep on dropping. And I'm out.